Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be going over the installation of the cooling kit. The cooling kit works the same for the W56 and the R150 swaps for the Mercedes OM617. What we'll be going over today is how to cut out your front core support and how to weld the new components in. The first thing you're going to need to do is determine where you're going to want to cut your front core support. So the project I'm working on here actually already had a Mercedes in it at one point so we're just going to be cleaning it up a little bit but what I usually do is I'll come about three quarters to one inch from this bracket that goes down to the body mount over on the driver's side and about a half inch over on the passenger side from this bracket edge. So we have a nice visual reference here because we already have a uh, welded on bracket installed, but we'll be cutting all that off. So the easiest thing to do is take a piece of tape, run it from the top to the bottom, and use that as your straight edge. Now that we have our masking tape in place to give us our straight edge for cutting, we're going to take the death wheel and trace the line down the edge of our tape and make the first cut in our front core support. Now to finish our cuts out to keep a straight edge, we'll take a sawzall with a new sawzall blade and finish the bottom of our cuts. scariest part about cutting out your front core support. The next step will be to weld on the side mounting plates. Now since I'm working on a truck here that has already once been swapped over, it's not exactly how it's supposed to work, but these lines should all line up with the rest of the body lines on the front core support. So mount the, the lines up, keep the top of your side plate flush with the top so that it doesn't interfere with the top mounting bracket. In an ideal situation, we would be able to weld all the way up and around both sides, like we can over here. So we'll get these parts tacked in place, and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, now we're back. And as you can see, I actually ended up cutting a little bit more off over here because I wanted a straight line and I really wasn't satisfied with how that was going to line up. Typically though, I want to cut quite that much off. I would leave a little bit more meat on there, but I wanted to get that cleaned up get a nice straight edge uh, so everything would line up and so we could get a nice weld. So the key with welding the side plates on is you want to keep the top flush with the top of the core support and then you'll line up the back side nearly flush with the back side and that will give you about a 3 16 edge along the side on the front to weld to. So what I like to do is I'll flush it out at the top, I'll line up the back side at the bottom corner, and then I'll put my tack at the top, I'll tack it at the bottom, and then as I'm going along I will actually hammer back the core support so that I have a nice even amount of weld all the way down on both sides. So as you can see here, the core support's actually sticking out a little bit past the front. So that'll end up getting hammered back, just back past flush, so that we can weld with a nice even weld all the way down. And the next step after you get that tacked on is to determine roughly where you think your bottom mounting plate is going to go. 
So in our case, we're going to be running the mechanical fan instead of an electric fan. So I have the mechanical fan mounted up and I'm going to leave a healthy gap between the fan and the bottom plate because these blades can flex, the motor can move, and so that's the reasoning for this little cutout on the back side of the bottom plate is for fan clearance. So once you get that tacked up, you'll get your 3 8 plate, just a piece of flat stock. There are some laser etched lines on the bottom plate to give you a rough idea approximately where you'd want to weld this flat stock to. That's not set in concrete. You can put it wherever you want. So I'll get this set on the bottom plate. Then I'll grab my radiator and we'll set that over the flat stock. And now I'm going to start mounting up the radiator to see exactly where I want to weld on my flat stock. So you can see what that's going to kind of look like roughly. And the next step is going to be to get our radiator hoses out, get those mounted onto the engine and to the radiator, and see just exactly where those hoses are going to want to push a radiator side to side. The last step is going to be to mount the bolt-on bracket from the top just to verify that we're within our parameters from side to side. So right here I'm about maxed out as far as I can shove my radiator towards the driver's side, otherwise my bracket would actually start interfering with my radiator. So we're going to get our radiator hoses installed, we'll get our top bracket on, and then when we are satisfied with where everything's at, we'll go ahead and on the bottom of our radiator where the formed C channel is, we'll mark the ends of the formed portion at both ends. And then all we need to do is make sure that we weld our flat stock between those two lines. You'll also want to mark the leading edge or the front edge of the formed channel so you know depth wise, front to back, where to weld that flat stock on. So we're going to get our hoses mounted up, we'll get everything measured out, and then we'll be back. Now that we've got the motor in, we have mocked up our new radiator and have everything tacked up where we think we want it. So to get to that point, we started off by chalking up this bottom plate here. Just filled this gap here with some spacers. And then next we set our radiator on top of it and then we clamped our radiator down with this top bracket and next we came and looked down from the top which I'll see if I can get a view here. Looking from here down you want to make sure you have about an inch of clearance between the radiator and the fan. Also you want to have clearance at the bottom with the weld on plate and the fan which is why we have gone ahead and cut that slot over here on the back side is to give you more room to weld to your vertical member and clearance for the fan in the middle. And so now that we have all that mounted up we've gone ahead and put our grill on so that we can now look down and make sure that our radiator is not going to be touching our grill. And so our last step here is to come in and you can just barely see it but I have our 
3 8 inch thick bar stock down here so I'm going to measure side to side where I exactly want to weld that on as well as front to back there's some laser etched lines on that bar stock to give you a rough idea of where you are probably going to be pretty close to mounting it and in our case here it's going to be exactly where we end up welding that on at so so now we're going to remove our drill remove our radiator and then we're going to fully weld this bottom plate onto the truck we'll fully weld on the vertical members as well and we will weld the bar stock to this bottom plate and that's also going to help make this bottom plate a lot more rigid once we get that on there once we do that and it's cooled off we'll paint it and then we're going to apply a strip of that foam with the adhesive backing to the bar stock as well as to the bottom of the top plate and that will cushion the radiator when it's being clamped down. Another aspect you need to look at when you're mounting the radiator up is your cooling hoses and so we'll be going from this outlet here and so we'll be going from this inlet here to the outlet on the radiator down there below and this outlet from the engine across and over to the inlet on the radiator to the other side. The other thing you need to keep in mind is making sure you have clearance to get your cap off the radiator and so I usually turn this to where that sticks out the most and make sure it's going to clear that plate there but the radiator is going to move a little bit so you always have a little bit of adjustment until you clamp the top down. The other thing we're going to do is take this cap off and on the inside we're going to cut this piece off and we're going to take that spring out and the only thing that we really need to retain is the bigger OD o-ring that's right up against the cap and that way this will have no pressure relief to it. It'll always be closed and that way we will be able to use our pressure tank from the Mercedes to relieve any pressure buildup and we'll do that via this little port here on top of the radiator. So by removing this top piece here it will no longer seal off that access port how this would have originally worked is at about 3 psi or whatever this cap is set at this spring would open up it would remove the seal off that face and water could then come from there and go out into your overflow tank but now we're going to remove that we're going to use this cap just to seal the radiator like the Mercedes radiator is set up and that will always be open to the radiator from the pressure tank. We will come back when we have some more parts routed and mounted so that you can see how everything's going to fit in here. Now I have our bottom radiator hose on. I don't have it tightened down yet so I can show you what I did. So here is the stock Mercedes hose. So that's about all that I keep of it. I put my adapter in it. And then on the hose that I send in the kit, I cut about an inch off the side that goes to the radiator. Because what you will find is the hose can actually bottom out on the radiator and then it sticks back too far. What you want is to get that hose onto the radiator as far as possible. And once you do that, you can take this, drop it in, and then tighten everything down, and then last, feed it up onto the thermostat housing. 
and at that point everything should be good to fill our water system up once we uh, get this hose connected to a radiator here um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this off I'm gonna fill it until it's running out of here then I'll cap that off then I'll finish filling it through here so that's about the quickest way you can do it because it's just gonna trickle through this little fitting if you're trying to fill the whole thing through it